Hi, this is your host Abdul Bharatiya, and today we have with us once again Anna Hermansen, Research and Ecosystem Manager of LF Research at the Linux Foundation. Anna, it's great to have you on the show. Great to be back. Thanks for having me. And today we are going to talk about another research uh, project at LF Research, the case for confidential computing. First of all, how would you define confidential computing? What is, it? what is it? Yeah, so it's a confidential computing is the use of a secure processing environment um, that runs a workload that consists of code and data that is protected and isolated from any other parties that are unauthorized to access it. Um, this could be kind of an adjacent application or the underlying platform that is hosting that processing environment. And so within confidential computing, that environment is called a trusted execution environment, a TEE. Uh, and these environments are considered trusted for a couple of different reasons. Um, the main one being that this environment is attested. And so um, the, the integrity and the authenticity of the different components within that environment um, are attested through a cryptographically signed proof. And so that cryptography provides um, a, an important component of data con con confidentiality. So it stops any unauthorized viewing. And then it also supports data integrity, where you can look at that proof and say, okay, there's been no um, unauthorized changes to, to that environment and to that data. And so this means that you can trust that environment, that there are no unauthorized entities that have gone in and altered, um, you know, removed or, or viewed, even viewed the data or the code as it's in use being processed. And another important component of trusted execution environments are those that are hardware based. Um, you know, when you have a software, there's always something below that software that can undermine the security um, of that system. And so when you're using hardware, it's at the bottom of the stack. And so it provides this immutable defense layer where um, you can you can protect whatever is coming up above that stack. Um, and so we have at the Linux Foundation, we host a group called the Confidential Com Computing Consortium, which brings together um, different vendors and developers in this space, as well as cloud providers to help support the, um, the adoption and accelerating the development of trusted execution environment technology and um, adopting standards in this space. Can you talk about what led to this uh, research work? Yeah, so we had um, individuals from the Confidential Computing Consortium come to us um, with a desire to understand where confidential computing is being used, what different case studies there are. You know, they've, they've done a ton of work on explaining what confidential computing is. Um, it is a quite uh, technical um, technology, um, but they wanted to know, okay, now that we know what it is, how do we use it? Where is it being used? Why is it useful? Um, and to have that information, not just anecdotal, but to have it, you know, down, it, written down in a report. And so, um, mainly to, to inspire project ideas, new proof of concepts, um, to have new projects come about in this space. And um, it was also important to them that it was community-based where um, the research is qualitative. And so the, the researcher interviewed people actually using and developing this technology um, and um, you know, showcasing the work that's being done in this space. And so the idea with this report was to, as I said, inspire new ideas um, and to, to support those that are building proof of concepts in confidential computing to get an idea of what the need is in this space, where it works best, which industries really need it. Um, and then for business leaders and IT managers that are wondering, you know, how can I protect my data in use? Um, confidential computing provides a really important uh, solution or avenue for these groups to explore. And so, um, as we always say at the Linux Foundation in our research department, uh, doing research is so important to take those kind of anecdotal things we know about the open source space or about a technology and to, to research it, to provide evidence around it and lead to that kind of that knowledge translation that can spotlight the work that's being done and provide an opportunity for our community to, to learn more about what's going on in this space. 
Can you talk about some of the use cases of confidential computing? There's kind of a few important reasons why an organization might want to adopt confidential computing. Um, and that kind of leads to a few use cases. So I'll just get into some of the reasons initially to give a bit more context. And so one really important reason is to be able to adopt a public cloud. Um, we have a lot of, uh, uh, as we've seen in our other research for the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, there is an increasing interest and adoption of public cloud. But for those industries that have really sensitive data, um, that ability to, to, to join a public cloud is, is just too risky. And so um, using a, uh, providing that opportunity through confidential computing means um, that, that it, within that trusted execution environment, the trust um, does not need to be placed in, you know, the, the host that's operating the cloud provider, the hypervisor, the kind of the, the hardware around that cloud, but instead the trust just needs to be placed within that execution environment. And so cloud providers are starting to adopt confidential computing technology to create these enclaves where we can bring in industries like healthcare and finance who are, um, you know, gun shy to be in a, in a public cloud where the risk is high. And so their, their application and their data can be isolated from other tenants on the cloud and, and even the, the hosting system itself. So that's one important reason why an organization might want to adopt, um, or might, might want to use confidential computing. Um, another important reason is collaboration. So, um, you know, as this ability to to send and to to process third party data is uh, can, can be quite risky. Co confidential computing creates this environment where these different uh, data sets from from different institutions can be connected and processed within the uh, trusted execution environment. Um, and then that data is, is sent back in an encrypted way. And so the data, the data can't be seen, but it can be used in that environment. And then the results sent back to each party in an encrypted way. Um, and then finally, you, uh, you know, the trusted execution environments are, represent a really important step in protecting data. You know, we have many different regulations around the world. Um, some that may even come into conflict with each other, where it's it's difficult to understand, um, you know, what the regulations are in in protecting data, and the compliance with for those regulations can become challenging and costly, and it just kind of becomes, you know, not really worth the risk and the cost for enterprises. And so, implementing confidential computing provides that that protection layer um, off the bat, and so. Um, within those kind of reasons to adopt, there are a few industries that uh, Suzanne Ambiel, our researcher on this project, highlighted. And so, first of all, um, there is a confidential computing, computing provides uh, clean rooms for marketing. Um, right now, we have really stringent regulations, as I mentioned, around our data. Um, customer data needs to be kept very secure. And so, um, and we've also seen an elimination or restriction of cookies. And so for a brand to be able to connect with third-party data has become quite difficult and, and is, is challenging to, to manage with the regulations. And so if we have these kind of what we call clean rooms, um, the data from that first party, from all the different parties that are, you know, these different brands um, can come together, can be processed and analyzed, and then those results can come back without um, potentially risking a, a breach or an, a security issue with the data. This similar concept comes into play in financial services, which was another use case Suzanne highlighted, um, particularly when it comes to uh, dealing with money laundering. And so, um, you know, at a, at a bank, at an institution, they have uh, kind of this tension between uh, protecting their data and having very strict regulations around their customers' data, while at the same time needing, needing to be able to analyze their customer data to perform Know Your Customer, KYC, and, and anti-money laundering um, procedures. And what's more, with, with money laundering, the ability to be able to connect different bank databases makes the probability of catching money laundering much higher, where that pattern recognition becomes clearer. 
And so to have a data room that collects all of this data from multiple financial institutions without exposing that raw kind of customer information, that identifiable data uh, becomes really useful in this context. Another important industry for healthcare, for uh, confidential compu computing is healthcare. Um, we have a lot of different uh, you know, institutions that are very siloed within the healthcare space because that data is just too sensitive to share um, and to put on, even put onto a cloud. And so um, the processes for linking different institutional data together are currently pretty cumbersome. They're inefficient. They're a kind of a regulatory and legal minefield. And so data remains locked in these silos when connecting it all together um, we know is really important and useful for research and development of therapeutics for um, better patient care. And so being able to connect all that data is really important. And so confidential computing can deliver that kind of federated learning solution that is really important in the healthcare space. A final, one final uh, use case we do talk about in the report is an AI, which of course covers different industries. And so um, to be able to uh, you know, securely connect our, for an organization that is developing um, a, uh, a healthcare, or sorry, developing an artificial intelligence model, they can connect their data to a third party model such as OpenAI. That can be risky and make their data vulnerable. And so being able to do those kinds of connections in a confidential computing environment uh, protects that data in store. And as we have discussed in past, and you touched briefly on that as well, that these reports not only gather where they get the pulse of where the folks are, but it also helps in kind of creating future strategies or actually help companies how they should strategize. So uh, talk a bit about what role do you see of not only doing this research, but also publishing the use cases of conventional computing if it can be used as road model for other companies or just to see, hey, this, these are the use cases where it is ideal. As I mentioned, the research is so important for showcasing the kind of work that's going on, especially from a qualitative perspective. We can really get into the weeds of why an organization may adopt a certain technology um, or you know, what's, what's its um, use case. Um, whether it's now or in the future. And so um, the, the research that we've run with Confidential Computing Consortium uh, provides an avenue for organizations to understand, you know, what's the next step for me when I know I need to protect my data? Um, you know, our, our, any, every industry is moving very quickly um, and is already quite entrenched in digitalization. And so um, to be able to use a technology like Confidential Computing is crucial to protect our data in across its life cycle. We already have encryption uh, technology, encryption solutions for data that is in storage, you know, disk encryption. We have, um, you know, encryption technology for data that's in transit on a network. But being able to to encrypt data that's in use is still quite um, challenging, and, and confidential computing provides an opportunity for that. Um, I would think one. One interesting, one important uh, point for, for confidential computing is that uh, we have a lot of um, uh, virtualization happening in mobile, on the, in a vehicle, and edge. And so being able to, um, for, for confidential computing to be used in those areas and strengthen the security of, of data being used within a, a mobile application, in a car, um, or on the edge is a really important component of, um, or a really important important use case for, for confidential computing. And, um, you know, given this area is quite, uh, securing data in use is relatively immature, confidential computing has the potential to become a standard approach for protecting data in use. And, you know, as we work within an open source context, um, it can also be a really de democratizing way to secure computing, making it available to all by creating open source technology. Uh, and so um, to be able to have organizations use confidential computing in an open source manner, to use a public cloud, um, to be able to share data that way, it really unlocks a lot of savings for users um, from a, a, a compute perspective, 
from you know a data generation and data analysis perspective, um, and you know even just from a procurement and technology development perspective. And so I think um, you know for us to be able to showcase the the different aspects of where confidential computing can be used and is so um, crucial to developing these areas forward and to developing more data sharing um, is is really important and part of the reason why we run our research. Once again, thank you. And if you can also talk about who is the ideal audience for this report, who will benefit the most? A number of different audiences can benefit from from reading our report. Uh, That could be Uh, individuals who are developing proof of concepts. Uh, And so um, looking at where that exists currently, what different organizations are running uh, confidential computing systems that are highlighted in our um, in our report and understanding what the work that they've done and where there might be gaps from from the research and um, yeah, where proof of concepts could be developed. Um, I also think it's a really important way for, you know, so many business leaders and IT managers are faced with data protection crises. And so to be able to um, to read our report and understand that there is a solution out there um, that is being developed by this consortium of of neutral and democratic people out of the Linux Foundation um, really provides um, even just a, a way to kind of percolate on what is the next step for their for their managers or for their for their organizations, I think it's also an important way for public cloud providers to to respond to that call and that need where you know they might be confronted with in- industries that really want to use them, such as a healthcare provider, but are hamstrung by that that risk of putting their data into a public cloud. And so I think with um, with this report, we can show there is actually a solution, um, you know, when it comes to being compliant in a regulatory perspective and also, um, you know, being able to share that data. It kind of provides this perfect um, platform where it solves that regulatory issue while at the same time providing that that space to share data. And so I think it uh, in part, is a way to kind of inspire individuals in the space that are looking for a solution. Um, and then I think, of course, it's interesting for for the open source community in general to to read a report like this to understand a different, you know, um, niche aspect of of the the open source community and where open source is um, is providing a lot of benefit around that democratization and the standardization of a technology. And can you also talk about why this report or even confidential computing is relevant today? Every business, every um, every industry is is hamstrung by needing to protect their data while recognizing that the you know being able to share data is such an important part of revenue generation of um, you know providing solutions for. Uh, even larger global challenges like healthcare and um, climate change, and so being able to um, to speak to a solution like this, especially in this in this kind of pressure cooker of of data privacy and data, um, you know, all the data breaches we hear about, um, is is I think really makes it a really relevant um, technology to talk about right now. I think in particular, we look at, you know, the the increase in AI and how do we build um, a model, whether that's on premises or on a cloud, where the model and the algorithms are protected and the data is also protected. And so, um, you know, as we as we search for solutions where we can build a model that is um, protected, but also effective and has the data in it where, you know, we're not just using a first party data, but we're using a bunch of different data from a different from different parties. Uh, confidential computing provides that opportunity for for models to be developed that um, you know that have that protection in place. Um, you know we we can we can bring different data sources together to train a model um, without worrying about that data being tampered with. We can even protect that model within the trusted execution environment so that it doesn't get um, tampered with as well. And so I. I think from a from a you know, technological perspective, this burst in in AI development, it actually a, a confidential computing pairs quite well with 
these concerns we have, at least from a privacy perspective with AI. And I thank you so much for taking time out today and joining me today and discuss the report. Uh, thanks for your time. And I look forward to talking to you again soon. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I enjoyed it. Thank you.